Hello YouTube. The other day, I was thinking about making a video on 5 JRPGs that stayed in Japan for the Famicom. I was doing my research and I found this one game called Hoshiomiru Hito. And it was so interesting that I decided to do a video just on this game. I hope you enjoy it. So the story goes something like this. In the distant future, the computer called Crew 3 controlled even the hearts of the citizens. If the computer perceives something wrong in a citizen's heart, the Crew 3 uses mind control to brainwash them. But there were a very small group of humans who were considered psychics who would be immune to the mind control. The Crew 3 used robots, psychics created by DNA manipulation, and monsters to hunt down the psychics and take them to the city. A boy named Minami, who is the main character, who did not realize he is a psychic and not knowing why he is there nor who he is, is being hunted down by the evil forces of the Crew 3. Although this sounds like a very interesting plot, especially coming from a game that was made in the Famicom era, none of this until the ending is explained. If you lose the instruction manual, you're out of luck, because all this information is just on the instruction manual. But I wonder if this is on purpose, since the main character, Minami, has amnesia and he doesn't know what is going on. I'm probably giving it too much credit here. For the gameplay, the combat is pretty harsh. You start off in the middle of the field without any instructions on what to do. And some of the enemies are brutal even at this point. The spells are what will get you through the game, although at the beginning you will not be able to use any of the powerful spells, of course. Also, although in most RPGs you will find a good weapon to have a melee attacker, which can sometimes even be more powerful than magic users, in this game, no matter how powerful your attack or weapon is, you will only do your character's attack power minus the defense of the enemy. This means that the weapon has to be pretty strong in the endgame just to do very little damage to the enemy. Also, the interface is not very nice. Let's say, you made a mistake in selecting your command. Well, too bad, there is no cancel button. Let's say that you found a very strong enemy, and you know you will get killed. Well, you're out of luck again. There is no command to escape. Well, you could use teleport, almost like in a Pokemon game. But this skill is not available in the beginning, and sometimes it fails and sends you to a predetermined area in the map. I also find weird that you cannot evade attacks. You know how when you level up in an RPG, you're waiting to see what stats changed or how much more powerful you are compared to the last level? Well, in this game, you only get to listen to the level up sound, and that's about it. Usually, all of the stats except for the HP will not change very much. The HP almost always doubles in each level up. By the end game, you will have a huge amount of HP compared to the other stats. Just make sure that you have ESP skills, since like I explained, the physical attacks will not do much damage in the end game. Another huge problem. There is an enemy from the start that has an attack that makes you get ill. Almost as if you were paralyzed. You won't be able to do anything during the battle. You think that this isn't a big deal, but it is. During the battle, you won't be able to do anything, and you won't cure unless you use a skill not available at the beginning. This illness will take away HP on the field too, like getting poisoned in Pokemon. You do have medicine that you can use, but you can only use this on the field and not in battle. So, let's assume that all of your characters got ill. 
You wouldn't be able to do anything because they won't be cured on their own. And if you're on the end game, you know that their HP is pretty huge. So unless you want to waste your day to waiting to get killed, you will have to reset your game. Usually, in most RPGs, if all of the active members get turned into a stone or anything that will make you not active in battle permanently, you will automatically get a game over. I don't know what the developers were thinking and in not including this system, but whatever. There is also no saving without a password in this game. No big deal, right? I mean, Dragon Quest did the same. But, you know how in most games you see all of the letters on one screen? Almost like on a keyboard? Well, in this game, you have to scroll through the letters, including hiragana, katakana, alphabets, numbers, and special letters, which totals almost up to 150 characters. So you have to scroll through the letters like you used to when you got a high score on an arcade style game. Also, in the instruction manual, it says that when you use the password to load the game, you will lose a maximum of 255 gold and 3 experience points. I guess they did this to reduce the amount of memory being used, but it's kind of weird. So after all this, do you still want to play this game? Well, good luck to you. And I will be spoiling the ending in this video, so please skip to the next part of the video if you don't want to be spoiled. So basically, the Megalopolis is pretty messed up. So the computer, Crew 3, made the psychics with ESP so they can communicate with the dolphins and orcas who are very smart and they are called the chosen ones, but they are battling each other because of their differences. The dolphins and orcas can survive in the newfound planet called Aqua. The dolphins believe that they should go to Aqua with the psychics and orcas are against the idea. You must be wondering, then why are they hunting down the psychics? Well, they were looking for the most powerful psychic out there because the dolphins believe that the more intelligent humans who are psychics will be able to coexist with them, and the others who have been defeated have already been sent to Aqua. Since planet Aqua is covered in, you guessed it, water, the normal human beings would not be able to survive for long anyways. There are three possible endings in the game. Although it doesn't have any movie scene or anything, and you'll just get to read a very short text. The first one is where you choose to fight the dolphins. This is basically a bad end, where you actually don't even get to fight them. You just get a text saying that you could not defeat them. The second ending, where you choose to move to Aqua, you end with a message telling you that the future is bright. I guess this is a good ending if you don't look too much into it. If you decide to go with the third choice, to stay in the megalopolis, the psychics who were already sent to Aqua will be sent back to the city. This ends with a message that says, The heart feels dark and heavy thinking about the war between the humans. I think this is because the regular citizens who aren't psychics do not realize what psychics are and they believe they are almost like some kind of a terrorist group. So, in conclusion, I really liked the story for a Famicom RPG. It felt much more interesting than just a boy who will save the world type of story. I really wish that the gameplay was much better and many of the Japanese players thought the same. There are so many people asking for a remake, and there is even a fan-made remake called Stargazer. If you want to try it out, you might want to try to go for the remake and not the original unless you really love bad games. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the game, and thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day. Bye bye.